Hello and welcome to another episode on restarting the supply chain with me, Nikhil Pereira, uh, the editor at ITP Media Group, uh, to talk more about uh, the post-COVID situation that we have right now in the logistics sector. And uh, joining me today is Mr. Fadi Amudi with IQ Fulfillment. And we're going to be discussing a few things, mainly because IQ's business arms, IQR and IQF, have come into their own in the last few weeks using advanced technologies to help businesses adapt to the rapidly evolving e-commerce sector. Uh, Fadi, it's a pleasure that you can join us uh, this morning. Thank you, Nikhil. Pleasure uh, being with you and thank you for having me on the show. I want to get straight to it, Fadi. I want to ask you, uh, as someone who's completely immersed in the e-commerce industry, you must have had an eventful few months, right? I mean, what kind of challenges have your customers been coming up against and uh, how have you helped them uh, adapt to the changes? I know a lot of questions there, but if you can touch on everything. No, it's been quite interesting couple of months. Okay. Uh, as you know, uh, e-commerce uh, was propelled to the future and uh, our clients and SMEs in general and the whole e-commerce ecosystem had a lot of challenges. Some of these challenges were the interruption of goods, interruption of supply chain, interruption of demand, uh, high peaks, high demand of e-commerce, basically consumers, and uh, uh, all of this. So we, we, in IQ, we offered them a support system meaning that IQ uh, was there by their side every single day uh, after the pandemic and was always also with them before the pandemic. Uh, we're built on robotics and AI, so we maintained uh, a, a non-interrupted, basically, supply chain uh, and logistic uh, uh, sector. Uh, how have your B2B customers then benefited from your increased automation? You mentioned robotics in there, um, but if you look at the last 12 months then, over the last uh, year, how have your B2B customers benefited and what's the kind of potential that you, know, you have in the sector? Uh, the B2B, when it comes to IQ Robotics, we have a lot of interest. We also had a lot of interest since last year. Uh, this interest right now is becoming a reality, meaning we are implementing projects currently right now. We are signing new projects and I think that the entire B2B structure is on the verge of transforming currently in our region. Uh, pandemic hit the entire B2B really hard and I think everyone right now is aware that they have to have a contingency plan and they have to weather such challenges in the future. So in terms of the B2B sector, uh, and we are very well equipped within IQ Robotics in terms of customizing tailor-made solutions that would uh, optimize and uh, any supply chain and logistic uh, uh, solution that they require. And how would you say um, these sort of customization solutions help your B2B customers? What, what would be some of the... So what we do is we go, we go on the ground, and we meet with all our partners uh, because we, we, don't, we don't believe in having clients. So all our clients are our partners because we believe that this is a transformation journey for everyone. So you're going to have to always be by your side. We have to always be with them and by their side. It doesn't mean that it's, if it's built on robotics that there is no human interaction. A human interaction is extremely important with the technology because technology by itself will never work without that human factor in it each and every single day also. So uh, in terms of robotics and the whole transformation of the B2B sector, we promise a couple of uh, things. Number one, it is 99.9% picking accuracy rate. Number two, the efficiency rate is three times any of the human operation. Uh, the throughput and uh, rate is three times any human operation. And at the end of the day, it is 70% less cost in the long term. Now, currently, some of the B2B solutions that we're transforming is with less than a three-year ROI, which really makes sense. So we will never give anyone more technology than they require because it's against our core principles. We will build you a solution 
that is for the long term, but implementing the solution can be utilized in phases. Phase one, phase two, phase three. And just quickly, would you be able to give us a, a use case example of one of your solutions? Uh, if you want to use a hypothetical client, that's fine. If you can give mm. them a client, that is fine as well. But would you be able to give us a hypothetical uh, example of your solution in action? Yes. So I'll give you one live one. And I'm going to give you one not hypothetical. It is an existing, but I won't be able to share with you the name okay. till, till we announce it next month, hopefully. Okay. So. Uh, the first implementation we had is an IQ fulfillment. So IQ fulfillment is our connected fulfillment solution network. We are running a live uh, robotic facility right now, fulfillment solution, and we are supporting all SMEs and, multi, and uh, some multinational companies currently right now in our region. Uh, our facility has a capability of fulfilling up to 12,000 orders of robotic fulfillment a day with an average piece of three pieces per order. If you're going to compare that with any human operation, you would require at least 450 to 500 people on the ground floor, whereby we only have 50 people for that amount of throughput. So that alone is a statement of what we're doing. And it is a running business. Everyone, of course, is more than welcome to come visit us. We'll gladly show them uh, our technology and we would uh, encourage them to come because everything we are building is to also share with everyone. We believe in sharing all our knowledge with, with everyone in our region. And that's the only way that we will become better in our region. Uh, that's from a live scenario case. From another physical case that uh, I can uh, share with you within the B2B sector is that we won a B2B deal uh, that doubled the throughput for a B2B fashion uh, outlet from 40,000 pieces per day to 80,000 pieces per day minimum and save them around 180 uh, basically employees hmm. because they're also uh, have limitation when it comes to space all right so we built a technology solution that double the throughput with less with 50 percent less cost I think uh, you've you've mentioned uh, sort of robots a few times in this uh, interview, and I think it'll be prudent to sort of end or the last part of our interview to talk about uh, the e-commerce sector that you just touched on and robots being the future. I mean, are we looking at um, hitting the axe on our own feet? Are we going to be making ourselves redundant? That's a good question. I always get this question. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, I don't, not really. I, am, I don't believe in it. As I touched at the beginning, uh, the human factor is really important. And the H2H uh, is, is extremely also important. Technology is great. All right? Technology alone will never succeed. You're going to have to have the technology with the right human element in it. People will always, we're always going to be around, right? So we're going to build the robot. You never know. Robots are building robots right now, right? Yeah. So you would need people to also operate. You would need people to also develop. You would need that, okay? Uh, for this coming uh, era, let's say, all right, the human interaction with the automation and robotics is crucial because you have multiple factors. Number one, you need everyone to be on board. You need the correct mindset. All right, you need the correct vision. It's not only that you can, everyone can sell technology, right? Everyone can buy technology. Mm. But how do you implement this? This technology really works. You have multiple elements or multiple factors that are all interrelated. First of all, you have to assess what do you need this technology for? When do you need it? Do you have the right resources to deploy this technology? And above all, do you really have the right partner? to implement this technology for you and be with you uh, in your transformation journey. So all of these factors are extremely important in assessing whether uh, a B2B or a, any e-commerce wants, wishes to transform. Transformation is not only to the B2B or the e-com. Transformation is across the board, yeah. whether it's B2B, B2C, governmental, you know, it's, it's just making the whole ecosystem uh, more efficient, in a shorter period of time. 
Yeah, I, I suppose it answers that age-old economics question, uh, demand and supply. So if there is demand for anything in this world, and you just touched on fashion, um, there is going to be required a solution that ensures that people, the customer, gets that experience faster and quicker. And whatever tools can be used, such as yours right now in that use case example, uh, to accelerate the process of the entire experience would make it uh, would tie it all into a, a, a nicely done up piece, isn't it? So uh, thank you so much for that, Fadi. And it was a real education chatting with you. Uh, we wish you all the best with IQ Fulfillment and all your other business arms. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure, ha pleasure being with you. And uh, please do, do pass by. I would love to show you around. Definitely. Take care. Bye. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.